Hello, my name is Torquil Faro. I'm a Norwegian doctor and uh, author. I'm going to uh, present uh, my book, uh, The Pulse Cure. So far, it has been on the bestseller list in Norway for more than half a year. Uh, big success. Uh, and I will tell you something about the book and what we have found out. The book is about how you can use uh, watches and rings and different devices to record your HRV and your stress levels to uh, make uh, benefits for your health. Some words about myself. Uh, I've been a doctor now for uh, 25 years. I've been uh, seeing 100,000 patients all over the country. Uh, and uh, through the 25 years, I've uh, seen a generation being born and growing old and see the changes that has happened during those 25 years. And uh, what I've seen is that a lot of the diseases uh, we now treat, they are about chronic inflammation and the preventable diseases caused by our hectic uh, lifestyle with wrong food, bad sleep, and so on. I have made uh, quite the health journey myself from uh, 2013 when I did uh, a lot of changes I started training, I lost weight, started sleeping better and uh, doing a lot of the things that I'm talking about in the book. I've actually done uh, almost all the mistakes uh, in the book that I'm uh, talking about. And now at the age of uh, 54, I feel stronger and uh, better than uh, the 10 years that has gone since I changed my lifestyle. The book is not uh, only about what I have done to change my life, but I have uh, been doing uh, a lot of research into current uh, knowledge in uh, medicine about uh, preventive uh, health to make sure that uh, what I present in the book is just not my own uh, thoughts on the discoveries, but that it's uh, grounded in the, the latest science. What I found is that um, our immune system, our autonomic nervous system is not adapted to the way that we live now. It is adapted to the lifestyle we had for millions of years that you can see on the pictures on the left, where a tribe has uh, hunted down a buffalo and uh, are enjoying the feast afterwards uh, with a uh, happiness and uh, connection. And this is the lifestyle we have uh, inherited uh, and our forefathers have lived through millennia. But now, as you can see on the picture on the right, we live in most ways uh, almost quite the opposite from the way that we have lived in all those millions of years. We uh, live mainly inside. We are connected to phones rather than people. Uh, we have artificial lights. Uh, we are clothed so that we are not exposed to weather and nature in the same way that we used to be. And uh, what I've seen and what many other doctors have seen is that uh, we need to combine the lifestyle of the past with the technology and tools of the future. That is what is going to keep our health uh, optimal for, for, uh, and sustainable health for the next uh, millennia to come. In my um, research for the book, I've uh, used a lot of different tools. Uh, I have used the uh, Overskud uh, device, that is a Norwegian uh, system. I also used the uh, First Beats uh, ECG-based uh, system to measure my heart rate variability and using their algorithms. I also used the Whoop, I still use it. I still use the Aura Ring and I still use uh, the Garmin watch uh, and what are these uh, devices? They are really stress monitors, stress watches that can find out your um, stress balance to see if you're on a healthy lifestyle or if you have a bad lifestyle that is going to make you sick. What they measure is what I call the, our inner living fossil because um, Way down in our brain, in our nervous system, is the basic system, the autonomic nervous system. 
you can see here on the picture there's a parasympathetic part that is calming down the system and you have a sympathetic part which is uh, arousing the system mobilizing ourselves for action you can also see that we have the immune cells are involved in this and the adrenal glands are involved in this and um, this system is uh, largely operating below our radar so to speak it is operated from the what we can in a simplified way call our reptilian brain and the mammalian brain uh, the more basic systems that we share with more uh, simple beings even like uh, reptiles like rabbits and rats and so on which is why of course we can use mice for research on human behavior and this uh, autonomic nervous system is largely overlooked by the medical uh, community and by myself until a few years ago mostly because we have never had a real easy measuring for it which we of course now have through the heart rate variability and uh, we can see that in the parasympathetic mode uh, where we are relaxed and uh, in, in a harmony with ourselves our heart rate will rise a bit on the in breath just to take advantage that our lungs are filled with oxygen it will step up the beat and then when we breathe out the heart the rate will allow itself to calm down to save some energy while the lungs do not contain as much oxygen inside so this happens when we are in a relaxed mode and from nature from the we are supposed to be in this mode most of the time but in the sympathetic mode in the stress mode the body is uh, regarding that we need to use, use all our forces and even on the out breath when our lungs does not uh, contain as much uh, oxygen it will not lower the heart rate and it will beat steadily like a watch and these small changes measured in milliseconds is what our modern devices can detect and teach us about our nervous system that is mostly going under our radar in the daily life i call them physiological speedometers so that when you see these uh, speedometers on your uh, Apple watch or on your iPhone or on your Samsung Android phone you will have kind of a speedometer showing your physiological speed through the day night and day and also in the moment so here you can see what the aura ring gives you they give you a number for the readiness of the day based a lot on uh, HRV it will also give you a sleep score based on your how long you have slept and the sleep phases and the, how restful you have been during the sleep and this is also what whoop will give you they will give you a, a score for the recovery pretty much like the readiness and aura and they will measure how much strain you can take that day and uh, compare it to how, how rested you are but the garmin uh, with the numbers from uh, first beat is uh, what I um, prefer to to use, and uh, you can see from the blue blue uh, graph here, this is from the parasympathetic restful mode during the night, and then uh, during the day and sometimes during the night as well, we're in the stress mode, and uh, you have the body battery system shown here in the white line that has been maybe a seventy here and then going down during the day. and uh, it's easier to adjust our lifestyle once we have these numbers because what is measured can be more easily mastered and a lot of people ask me uh, isn't it very stressful to have this monitor to watch your pulse all the time and i tell them that uh, if you can drive a car at 80 kilometers an hour and still do track of the your speed and uh, how much gas you have left on the tank or or electricity in the modern cars and uh, then then you can easily also 
pay attention to um, these systems on your on your watch. So this, uh, of course, you can't just um, look at your watch. You have to use your own intelligence. So the watches, uh, they use uh, the most modern artificial intelligence. But we, of course, also have to use our own intelligence to interpret the numbers we see on our watches or rings or ECG meters. So, of course, when, uh, when the moose suddenly shows up in your way, you have to to take that into accountability. If not, you're, you're crashing. So what is stressful? There's a, if you ask the common man in the street, uh, what are you stressed? What is stress? It will, they will answer somewhere around this line here. Is it a lot of stress at work? Do you have a life crisis going on? A divorce? Is a child of you? sick, having troubles in school and so on? Are you plagued by a disease that is uh, hindering you in your daily activities? Are you restless? Are you a restless person? Or do you have a very busy schedule that your, your day is packed with uh, activities? But what we have found, and I had a test group of 200 people during the research for my book, we found that um, actually most of the stress is going underneath our radar. We are not aware of the stressfulness of these things. We're talking sleep depth, that we sleep too much, that gives uh, stress the day after. We often eat the uh, wrong food, ultra processed food, fast carbohydrates, that is uh, stressful and shows on our uh, monitors. We eat too much during the day, we eat too early in the morning and too late at night. That will also give stress. And uh, often, and a lot of people have actually found out that they were having an unrecognized disease showing up on the stress levels. Alcohol is a big surprise to a lot of people, how much that uh, costs in the physiological budget. And the menstrual cycle for the women in this period of their life, that the week before uh, Ovulation is a big factor, a big stressful that they need to take into account when they do their daily activities. And of course, daily activities, although they are small and not hard to do, when you put them all together, we have to take them into account. A lot of people actually train too much. Most people train too little, but a lot of people also train too much and get stressed by, by that often because they don't take the whole picture into account. And um, um, so there's not enough on the their kind of physiological budget to invest in training. Heat in the summer, uh, you can also, uh, it's a big stress for the system. A lot of people have childhood traumas that uh, will give them a kind of uh, high, uh, they are high strung, they are, uh, easily stressed more than other people and of course poor fitness so if you have a poor vo2 max if you have a poor fitness level every daily activity will cost you more it will be more stressful to do anything that you usually do during the day and actually altitude also if you go up to the mountains it will uh, be uh, stressful whoop actually mentions altitude as the second most stressful factor Alcohol being the worst and disease being number three. So with these factors in mind, uh, we have to think about what I would call the body budget. That we have some things that uh, is uh, income on our uh, body budget. If we sleep enough, we rest enough, we eat the right food that is not uh, creating inflammation in our bodies. We exercise in the right amount. We uh, do breathing exercises. We can do meditation. And uh, we are connected to other people. That is very important for us humans. You can also use uh, cold exposure. We have to look into our hydration if you get enough water or, or liquids during the day. And fasting is also another way to restore calm in our nervous system. And on the expense side of the budget, 
we have the the stressful events uh, during the day. We have the daily activities. We have disease. Obesity will uh, give inflammation and will stress your system. Poor fitness, uh, likewise. Uh, heat in the summer or uh, also heat inside our houses. If you have turned the heat on too much, it will drain a certain amount of uh, energy from us. Loneliness or worrying and things that uh, keep us uh, depressed will, will be stressful. Processed, uh, ultra processed foods, uh, late meals and alcohol. So we have to try to up the side of the income and balance with the expense side. So we are going to stress, but we have to keep the system in balance. So in my book, The Pulse Cure, uh, I have something called expedition legs. I call it expedition because it's not an easy journey. Uh, changing your life is uh, quite uh, hard to do. And uh, you have to be prepared. And uh, for an expedition, of course, preparation is half the job. And uh, this is why half the pages in the Pulse Cure is about preparation, knowledge about what you're going to do, about the nervous system, about your immune system and uh, heart rate and so on and the devices and once you have uh, learned uh, a lot about that you are ready to do the expedition legs and uh, in this lecture i will uh, prioritize uh, sleep stress movement rest food alcohol and also some on nicotine some advices on the sleep it's very useful to calm down the one to two hours before you go to sleep to go in for a soft landing into the sleep to prepare so that your body can and mind can sleep in a quiet way you need to get around eight hours of restorative sleep uh, that's uh, more than maybe a lot of people think is necessary and uh, one way to do it is to keep your bedroom dark and cool and of course silent uh, so you don't get disturbed much in the sleep the reason why i start with sleep and this expedition is because when you are managing to sleep better you have more power to do the other other legs of this expedition here is what i found that made me sleep good these are numbers from the overskud um, the black device that you saw on the pictures um, earlier on I found that uh, the hours, if I was calm this, in this system, the, the green graphs here are the parasympathetic and the higher, the more parasympathetic. The red ones are then, of course, uh, the sympathetic uh, activation. And I could see that uh, if uh, in the hours from 21 to 23, that I was relaxed and uh, in a parasympathetic mode, the sleep was a lot more restorative. So this is a typical example of the 10% best nights that I had. Then I collected the 10% worst nights that I had. And I could see that in this uh, lower part uh, on the, uh, you can see the red uh, activation here in the evening. It could come from a late meal, it could come from late training, a stressful, a hard day and so on. But it would, uh, the result would be a lot lower restorative here you can see this is a lot lower here than uh, up here on the on the upper graph and the next day would then typically be a lot harder to to go through because you wake up uh, drained of resources and you have to pull out more resources resources than you actually have for the rest of the day and the stress the next leg of the trip and uh, it's uh, very important to acknowledge that uh, stress is necessary. We are uh, not going to discard of stress, but we have to get control over it. Stress is actually necessary for growth. Uh, just as you build muscles in the gym, we need to stress and uh, do difficult things, hard things to grow in our minds and uh, in, our, in our bodies. It's also important to be aware of the compound effect so that uh, you can see on the picture here, I have a red ring around the lecture that I did early in the morning. Usually at this time of day, I'm still in the blue zone, 
uh, but here on the hard, uh, intense lecture for three hours, it was a lot of stress. And then when I carried my equipment and books uh, home uh, in the heat, the, the stress continued for a long time afterwards, even if I was relaxing as much as I could after the intense uh, lecture. I would also say that uh, in my experience as a doctor, that if you have stress without your control, if you have a bad boss or you have family members uh, giving you a hard time, it's more stressful than if the stress is with your control, that you decide uh, when to do the hard things and when not to do it and when to relax. Movement is also very important for uh, a body in uh, balance. It doesn't have to be too much. It can be quite easy actually to get the amount necessary for a healthy body and brain because the, the organ in the body that profits mostly from uh, movement is actually the brain that will build better connections and uh, with a better, uh, better memory, better concentration, it will be easier to learn. But uh, 30 minutes of brisk walking five uh, days a week uh, is enough. Just uh, walking that you get a little bit short of breath, not too much. You get your pulse up and, uh, but you also need muscle. So, uh, I think that, uh, the exercises here with the uh, squats, with sit ups and push ups, if you do this, you have covered a lot of the muscles that you need both for daily activities. And, uh, also as you get older, you really need the muscles in your legs to avoid uh, a tendency of falling. It's also important to move every hour. Our lymph system and our circulation system needs to, to circulate, of course, to, to rid the body of, uh, of the toxins and uh, uh, everything that is a result of the cellular work it needs to, to circulate. So me, myself, I use a lot of uh, skipping rope here. I, uh, if I am a uh, having a easy day every hour I do some skips maybe a hundred skips and then uh, I have enough uh, circulation and concentration for the next hour it's interesting to uh, follow also in our uh, uh, devices here you can see that I've done 50 push-ups and 50 squats and then I relax afterwards and you see it takes quite a long time before the body calms down to the place it was before. It actually takes uh, an hour and a half, often due to lactic uh, acid uh, that uh, seems to be quite stressful for our body. We also have to use and uh, get into our lives what I call active rest. Not just uh, take the foot off the pedal, but ac actively break down our physiological speed. We can do that by breathing exercises. For example, four seconds in and six seconds out with a total of six breaths a minute. Maybe do it for one and two minutes uh, during the day. If you work in a stressful office or have a stressful job, or you can also do it for like 10, 15 minutes uh, in the morning or evening, just to learn to calm your system down. Cold showers and cold baths is also very restorative for your uh, physiological system. I would also recommend doing some meditation. Reading is a lot, an activity a lot of people find very calming and also something that they can, is useful that they learn and have a good time or listening to podcasts or, or, um, audio books is also a, a good activity to, to calm yourself down. I'll show some pictures that, uh, is my experience in, uh, with a uh, hot and uh, cold uh, water. Here you can see we, I'm, uh, it's not me of course, but uh, people relaxing in the sauna. And here I took uh, for two hours, I took uh, a quite uh, hot sauna combined with uh, ice, really ice cold water. But it was a big stress on my system. So even if I was only in the water for, or only in the sauna for uh, maybe an hour and hour and a half, it took uh, six hours, as you see on the top uh, graph here, six hours to get back into the state that was before actually. So it's uh, important to take into account that the hot sauna can be like a exercise session and that you don't think it's relaxing even if you have been inside there. 
On the second uh, picture here, you can see the effect of a cold shower, two minutes shower in the morning. You see the in the first uh, little gap here in the morning. And afterwards, I was actually more relaxed than at night due to the cold shower for two minutes. And then on the last picture here, you see this is actually me in the icy cold water. And you can see from the graph exactly when I was in the water here, because uh, after that, I was in a parasympathetic mode for like two, three hours. So uh, an ice bath can, can twist your nervous system from uh, intense activation to intense relaxa relaxation. Maybe, of course, not in the moment you're in the ice cold water, but afterwards it will, uh, it will turn it, uh, the parasympathetic activity on. Nutrition is a big part of a healthy lifestyle. Uh, what I recommend, uh, as you can see here, is uh, having an eating window of uh, maybe eight hours so that you start the first meal of the day. Uh, you can, it's best to start with proteins, by the way, that you start from uh, 11 and then you have eight hours until seven and after seven o'clock uh, at night, uh, no more eating. To give your intestines and gut enough time to recover from the work of the, of the digestion. You should eat real food, uh, food that your uh, grandmother or great grandmother would recognize as food, as we see here on the, on the picture. And uh, try to limit the amount of uh, ultra processed food that you usually buy in the store. 60% of those food we buy now is uh, ultra processed food that uh, food that we are not really meant to eat. Also, because it doesn't uh, contain enough fiber that uh, we need for our gut uh, microbiome to work uh, properly. Here you can see the big effects on the nervous system from uh, eating. We have a day here where I started eating uh, on a Christmas day from uh, around noon. And even though it was a very relaxing day, you can see that uh, the stress just from eating uh, heavy food and of course some uh, sugary sweets as well uh, uh, during the day it's a high stress on our my system and here i had a fasting day or a fasting mimicking day with uh, all the uh, 700 calories and you can say see in the same period my body battery stayed the same my body was in uh, parasympathetic uh, mode and a lot of people have identified the food intolerances by the large, um, large uh, stress from their graphs. Alcohol is uh, also, unfortunately, for uh, me and many other people, uh, like stress in a bottle. Uh, people are shocked, really, by the effect during the night uh, and the stress during the night. And I will show you uh, the effects of alcohol because uh, here I was on a workshop uh, having a good time, but in the evening I took uh, four glasses of wine and you see the relaxing effect uh, of uh, alcohol where I turn from uh, stress mode into the relaxed parasympathetic mode and feel really fine until the alcohol on the picture below, you see that uh, as the alcohol will transform in the liver into acetaldehyde, uh, which is a highly poisonous um, molecule. It uh, will keep a lot of stress during the whole night, actually from then one o'clock uh, and until uh, seven o'clock. And you see that once I get up, I, I go out and take a cold bath. I was in Mallorca and uh, I could do uh, quite cold uh, uh, baths in the swimming pool and so I could turn the stress into very very low activation here so that can be a good tip for you if you if you still want to drink uh, some glasses of wine <clears throat> what uh, is so nice about um, these uh, watches these rings these devices to keep track of the nervous system and our physiological system is that it shows that what we can do for our bodies is mostly free. So running or moving is free. Water is, of course, cheaper than most other uh, beverages. We can eat uh, salads. We can eat uh, fresh uh, fruits that are often also um, cheaper. 
breathing exercises, meditation is cheap, sleeping is of course uh, cheap, and uh, cold exposure is actually cheaper than uh, than uh, you can turn the heat down, so you save money. Uh, but that's also the problem. So there's no commercial pressure to use this. Uh, while most of the healthcare system, uh, we wait until people get sick uh, before we treat them in an expensive way with uh, surgery, with expensive medicines. Uh, so we actually allow people to get sick, unfortunately, before we treat them. Uh, there is uh, very little money in most healthcare systems. In Norway, we only use uh, less than 5% uh, of our money on uh, preventive health. That is why it's uh, so nice that uh, there's now commercial pressure or there is commercial interest in keeping us healthy and not only after we get sick by treating us. During the research for the book, uh, I had the 200 people using Garmin watches and the first beat system. Uh, they uh, have a, the book is really peppered by this, uh, this uh, quote from them, from what they learned. It's a big important part of the book. And I think this uh, sums it quite well up what the Theresa at 42 years old said. The best part of monitoring is a feeling of having a hearing aid connected to my body. And now that I can listen to the, the body's signals, I can take better care of myself. And uh, I always uh, recommend people to find some other people to join them in their efforts because it's a lot easier to start training or to quit smoking or lose weight if you do it together with someone. And uh, a group is fine, but a group of two people is a lot better than just uh, one person. So um, that was what I wanted to share today with uh, about the pulse cure. I hope it can be uh, uh, of use uh, to you. Uh, and uh, that uh, hopefully at some point this will be translated um, into English and be available also for the big international audience. Thank you for listening.